So Jesus in the lake of fire. We we'll look at Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Verses 41 to 43. The gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 13. Verses 41 to 43. The Bible says, the son of man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cut them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun at the son in the kingdom of their father. He who has ear to hear, let him hear. He who has ear to hear, let him hear. And then the same Matthew chapter 18, verses 8 and 9. Matthew's gospel, chapter 18, verses 8 and 9. Jesus again says, If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. And finally, the same Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verse 41. 25, 41. 25, 41. Then he will also say to those on the left, then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands for Jesus. Jesus in the lake of fire. Jesus in the lake of fire. Now, the first text scripture that we read. Um, Matthew 13, verse 41. The Son of Man, that is Jesus, will come. He's talking about the end of time. When the, the time comes for Jesus to judge the world. He said, the Son of Man will send out his angels. And they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. And those who practice lawlessness, all things that offend. All things that offend. And those who practice lawlessness. It means that all abominable things, abominations, all things that belong to the kingdom of Satan, all things that people use to practice their lawlessness, their rebellion, or their, their, their hatred of God. God's angels will go around and separate, gather all these things, and they will cast, they will cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be a furnace of fire. And she says that on that day, on that day or that time, there will be wailing, weeping, crying, and the gnashing of teeth. Men will cry. Men will wail. And people will gnash their teeth. Because at that time, there's no more room for repentance. There's no more room to, to accept Jesus. That is the day of judgment. And then Jesus goes on to say that then the righteous, those who practice righteousness, as opposed to those who practice lawlessness. Everyone who is not in Christ Jesus, and this is what people find difficult to understand, as many as are not in Jesus Christ are considered to be lawless. And only in Jesus Christ can one be righteous because the, righteous, the, the righteousness of the believer, the believer's righteousness 
is not from him or from her. It's from Jesus. No one can be righteous before God. It is by grace. And this grace is found only in Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is by believing in Jesus that by grace you receive that righteousness from God. And therefore, the Bible says the just, the just shall live by faith. Having faith in Jesus, saving faith in Jesus makes you righteous, makes you just. The just shall live eternally by faith. So those who are righteous who shine forth, shine forth as a son in the kingdom of their father. Then he says, you are here to hear, let me hear. It's not by force. It is not by coercion. It is not compulsory. Nobody forces anyone to believe in Jesus. No one makes it compulsory for you. Here in this life, you don't receive any punishment or penalty for not accepting Jesus. So Jesus said, it is free. It's up to you. It's your own choice. It's your own choice. So he says, he who has ears to hear, let me hear. And those who, have, who don't have ears to hear, let them not hear. But the fact is that the lake of fire, judgment day is coming. It's coming. Whether you believe it, whether you accept it or not, it is coming. Your belief or unbelief will not change anything. Therefore, he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And then chapter 18, verse 8 and 9. Yeah, talk about sin. Sin is what leads us to hell. Sin. The only thing that will take one to hell is sin. And sin means disobeying God, it being rebellious, being lawless. So God has given us his laws, his rules, his commandments. And those who obey those commandments are called righteous. They receive righteousness from God. Those who disobey God's commandments, God calls them rebellious. They are rebelling against God. God says, go. And they say, no, I will come. God says, don't do this. They say, no, I will do it. What about God says? They do the opposite. So they are, they are rebellious. They rebel against God. And therefore, what they practice is against the law of God, against the commandments of God. Their life is against the commandment, the law of God. So, the Bible calls them lawless. They are lawless. Hallelujah. So, he said, even if your right hand, figuratively, causes, or your foot causes you to sin, anything that causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. Now, forsake it. Throw it away. Repent from it. Stop it. Because it is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed. Better for you to go into life with one hand or crippled rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and he himself should lose his own soul? And then even if your right eye figuratively, symbolically causes it to, to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. Even if your right eye, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life, everlasting, eternal life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. So, if you watching me right now, Nibwe Town, Teshi, Michelle, Camp, and Tema here, this is Jesus warning us. This is for everyone, both Christians and non Christians alike. Christians and non Christians alike. He who thinks he's standing should be very careful that he does not fall. He who thinks as a believer becomes complacent. So be careful that it does not fall. 21, 41. 21, 41. 
Then you will say to those on the left hand, that the lawless, sinful, the unsaved. <laughs> you say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you curse, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. You see, this lake of fire, this everlasting fire, was originally prepared for the devil and his angels, the devil and the demons. It was not intended for man. God made man in his image. God made man in his own likeness. And it was the plan of God that man should always be where God is, having fellowship, communion with God. But the devil came and deceived many. Sin came into the world, and with sin came death. With sin came death. So when Satan and his angels sinned against God, and they rebelled against God, they refused to obey God in heaven. That led to war in heaven. God prepared hell for them. God prepared the lake of fire for the devil, Satan, and his angels. But when Satan was now able to sort of deceive and lead many to follow him, and the rabbi said that hell was enlarged. Hell went through renovation. Hell was expanded, extended, extended to accommodate the millions, millions of people who will be with Satan in the lake of fire. And I never forget a vision that God showed me. At the back, are you listening to us? Media, are you listening to us? Please do. A vision God showed me early in my ministry and I saw this lake of fire, a huge bonfire, and um, people were being poured, the lawless, the sinful, unbelievers, were being poured into this fire from something like a big container. It's like the way you pour um, shrimps or um, keta scuba, you know, these small fish, like a big basket, and you pour it into fire. And all human beings, heads, arms, and legs, human beings, millions being just tipped. It's like a, a tipper truck. From this big container pouring them into fire. And indeed, there was wailing, weeping, crying, shouting, anguish, and gnashing of teeth. And when I woke up from sleep, from that night vision, in fact, I was trembling and sweating. And I've never forgotten that sight. A very, very fearful sight. No wonder that the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear, with trembling. <laughs> now, this lake of fire is therefore God's final punishment. It is God's final punishment. Remember that all who are not in Christ are already under God's punishment. Everyone who is not in Christ is already under God's punishment. The Bible says that he, that he has therefore delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred or conveyed us into his kingdom, the kingdom of Jesus. So the mo as long as you don't have Jesus, already doesn't matter how good you feel or how well you feel. Remember that you are under God's punishment. And the punishment continues on and on in various kinds and various shapes. shapes. Punishment here and there. These things are not meant for Christians. They are not meant for believers. And this lake of fire we're talking about is therefore God's final punishment. Sometimes the punishment here that we receive on earth God's punishment that follows us, that's unbelievers here on earth, is meant to make us change. They are designed to make us see the power and the love of God and make us repent so we don't end up with this final punishment. But the lake of fire is for the unrepentant. 
unbelievers who do not believe. That is God's final punishment for them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Therefore, it means that the believer enjoys special grace on earth from God. There's what we call grace. There's something we call grace. Curse. Grace. And special grace. Don't forget that. There are three things in, in this life. Either you are cursed or you are blessed. And for everyone who is not in Christ Jesus, there's a curse. And curses bring punishment. Curses bring agony. Curses bring anguish. Curses bring torment, problems. Yes, even we believers, many are afflictions, but the Lord delivered them, delivered us from them all. Now, then there's what's called general grace. General grace happens to everybody. When the sun rises, we all enjoy the sun. We all enjoy the air. When the, when the rains, the rain falls on both the believers and the unbelievers. Everybody eats every day. This is all by general grace. It's for everyone so that humankind will not be, will not be annihilated will not be killed off, that will survive. But believers enjoy, and we use the word enjoy, believers enjoy special grace. And this special grace is more than general grace. It is having that special personal relationship with God. You knowing God as your God, and God knowing you as his son or his daughter. So believers enjoy special grace even here on earth from God. Church, if you agree with me, say amen. amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. So if you are a believer, remember that you must be or you are under God's special grace. Now, Jesus called this, this final punishment the furnace of fire. Different names, there are different names for this, this fire. Furnace or fire. We all know what a furnace is. Everlasting fire. Furnace because it is, it is hot fire, huge fire. Furnace, burning. It's like a furnace. It's not small fire, it's a furnace. Fire. Everlasting fire because that's not quench. It goes on forever. It's there forever. Goes on forever. It does not run out of fuel. The gas or the charcoal or firewood does not. Is not used. So it goes on forever. And when you look at the sun, when you look at the sun, the sun should remind all of us that this is true. If you haven't seen this furnace of fire or everlasting fire. Consider the sun. So now I think of these things. Ever since God made the universe, the sun has always been there. And the sun, it gives light, it's, it gives heat, it's hot, very hot. And it gives light. You cannot even look at the sun with your naked eye. You can't look at the, at the sun, it, it, you, it, will, it will blind you. And this is this fire, ball of fire that gives us heat and light, have been burning since the day of creation. It's been burning. So, what is it that is burning up there? Just consider it. What is it? Where does the fuel come from? Is it gas? Scientists say it's a a combining uh, gases combining, and if the gas, where do the, where does the gas come from? Why is it not used up? All these years, why is the gas not used up? Who is supplying the gas? Think of it. If it's firewood, who is carrying all that firewood? Charcoal. Who is buying the charcoal? So where what is causing the sun? And indeed, every star we see. 
in the galaxy, when you look up, every star is a sun. Our star is the sun. Here, earth, the earth, our star is the sun. Every star you see at night, you see them at night because they give light. Every star you see, it's a sun. God, Bible says, God put this there to give us light in the night. The sun gives us light in the day. And God put these stars there, which are suns, but they are very far away to give us light in the night. Otherwise, the night, you can't see anything without, without some kind of artificial light. So, when the Bible says that there shall be everlasting fire, everlasting fire, you better believe it. You better believe it. And the sun should be a constant reminder or the fact that what the Bible is saying, what God is saying, is yea and it is amen. Church, say amen. amen. So everlasting fire, or hell fire, because it will hell. That's why the devil, his angels, and those who don't die in Christ, this is where they shall be. So to them, it's called hell, or Hades. It's a place prepared for this. So it's, a, it's confined to a place. Do not burn everywhere. It's not everywhere. It's in a certain place called hell. Now, way back in the Old Testament, Jesus gives a lot of teachings on, on this lake of fire. But even before Jesus was born, the Old Testament clearly portrays God's fiery judgment. The Old Testament gives us warnings about God's fiery judgment at the end of time, even before Jesus was born. And for that, let's go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah chapter 66. Verses 15 to 17 and 24. Isaiah 66. Verses 7, sorry, verses 15 to 17 and 24. Isaiah 66. Verses 15 to 17. Then verse 24. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with a chariot like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by sword, the Lord will judge all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Verse 16. For by fire and by his sword, the Lord will judge all flesh, that's all human beings. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Verse 17. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves to go to the gardens after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Amen. Then verse 24 says, And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm does not die, and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Now look at verse 24 carefully. It says, And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses, the dead bodies of the men who have transgressed against me. Me, there is God. The dead bodies of the men who have rebelled, disobeyed against God. For their worm does not die and their, fle and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. In fact, in the lake of fire, not only is there fire, but the Bible talks about worms. Worms. So as the fire is burning the sinners in hell, and if, because the fire alone, they are wailing, crying, and gnashing their teeth, their bodies are also being tormented by worms. Worms that do not die. Eternally, living bodies burning with fire feeling the heat of the fire 
but not being consumed. The fire is not consuming their body, but worms are also eating up their bodies. Worms that do not die. In other words, eternal or everlasting worms. And this is not a place that any human being ought to be because everyone is created in the image of God, in the likeness of God. That was not God's plan, God's purpose for mankind, for humans, for man. This is punishment prepared for the devil and his angels. And therefore, indeed, it's a fearful thing indeed for one to find himself or herself in such a place. Church, and all those who are listening to me right now, may you never find yourself in such a place. If you agree with me, say a better amen. amen. Then clap your hands for Jesus. So as we look at this, it's also a reminder of the good thing that Christ has done for us. This will remind you and me <laughs> also about the value, how precious the thing that Christ has done for you and for me. Because without Christ, everybody will end up in this lake of fire. He came to deliver us from this power of darkness and to bless us in heaven. Amen. Amen. Now, when we go to the book of Revelation, there shall be a battle, the last battle called the Battle of Armageddon. There shall be a battle just as the first battle in, in heaven. There was war in heaven. There shall be a last battle. In the same way as there was a, a first wedding after the creation, first wedding, God officiating a wedding between Adam and Eve, there shall also be a last wedding in heaven between Christ and the church. Christ at the, at the, at the groom and the church at the bride. There shall also be a last battle. In this battle we call the Battle of Armageddon. And this battle will be waged by the beasts and the false prophets and Satan against God and his children. Against Satan aided being held by the beasts and the false prophets will rise up against God and the children of God. And we we'll like to wage war against God and defeat God. <laughs> but they will be defeated. Defeated. Revelation 19, 19 to 21. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19. Verses 19 to 21. Revelation chapter 19. Verses 19 to 21. And I saw the beasts, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army, that's God, against Jesus. Against him there, against God who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the bears were filled with their flesh. So in this last battle, Satan, a uh, false prophet and the beast, and these will have been working signs and wonders, they've been working miracles. They have been working miracles and therefore deceive many, deceive many. Many who go after miracles and uh, they don't look at the word of God. They just go for miracles, just miracles. And even though... Everything about these miracles show that 
they are not from God. Those who are obsessed with getting miracles, receiving miracles here on earth, their whole life, their whole aim is just to get miracles. Miracles. They will flock. They will follow this beast and the false prophet because they will work, they will work mighty signs and wonders. Mighty signs and wonders. With Satan, they will follow him. And therefore, they will many, many, they will many. And they will rise against God and his children, believers, the battle of Armageddon. But they will be defeated. I mean, the, 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 the end is quite obvious. This is a battle with, a, with an obvious um, end. The beasts, and the fourth person were captured and they were thrown alive into the lake of fire. Lake of fire. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, and the rest were killed with a sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the throne, on the horse. And all the best were filled with their flesh. The best of them would just come in. You see, the human beings who followed um, uh, Satan at that time, all the men who followed the beast, they'll be killed. And the best of them would just feed on their flesh. Revelation 20, the next chapter, Revelation 20, verses 7 to 10. Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 to 10. And when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. After a thousand years, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is at the sand of the sea. It's about the last battle. <laughs> their number, their multitude, will be at the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beasts and the false prophets are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Praise the Lord. So, this is how the lake of fire is going to serve. It's going to serve those who don't believe in Jesus, who don't serve God. We believers, it is not our portion in Christ Jesus. Not our portion at all in Christ Jesus. Now, Revelation 20, 14 and 15. The same Revelation 20, 14 and 15. 14 and 15. Revelation 20, verses 14 and 15. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So church, now look at it. We are looking at first the beasts and the false prophets were captured and cast into the lake of fire forever. Then Satan, after a thousand years, Satan also gathered an army to fight against but he was also captured. And next he was also cast into a lake of fire forever. Finally, death. Death and the power of hell, the power of Hades were also destroyed. Death and Hades. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Sin, everything about Satan, everything that's abominable, everything that came out of hell, kingdom of hell, kingdom of Satan. Also, it's like you sweeping your house and you see the, the, the rubbish and you make a bonfire of it. You just burn everything that you don't want. And anyone, then anyone also found written, who, who was not found written in the book of life, in other words, anyone whose name we found not in the book of life was cast into a lake of fire. As and many people whose names are not in that book. There are many whose names are not in that book. And church, here, let me, let me tell you, let me remind you again. 
Nibwe Tam, Michel Kam, Teshi, Tema, listen. And listen to me very carefully. Very, very carefully. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching tonight, this evening, drop at the rain. My speech, let my speech distill at the dew. As rain drops on the, ten, on the tender herb and showers on the grass, for I proclaim the name of the Lord. What I'm doing now is I'm proclaiming the name of the Lord. Ascribing greatness to our God. He is the rock. He is the rock. And his work is perfect. For all his ways are justice. His work is perfect. And all his ways are justice. A God of truth and wisdom. And therefore without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. Therefore, Moses says that otherwise, otherwise how, can, how can one chase a thousand? How can one, one person chase a thousand? And two, put ten thousand to flight. Unless they are rod, unless God has sold their enemies to them, God has delivered their enemies into their hands. Therefore, one shall chase a thousand. Church, may you all chase a thousand. And may two of you put ten thousand to flight. Unless the Lord has surrendered the enemies to his children, that's the only way two can put 10,000 to flight. Because their rock, they, what they call their rock, is not like our rock. Their rock is not like our rock. And even they know it. Our enemies know that their rock is nowhere, doesn't come anywhere near a rock. And therefore, they themselves, they are judges. They can judge it for themselves. And therefore, as I speak this evening, let it be known to you that I speak the wisdom, the mysteries of God. Therefore, Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. A revelation, again, so that's 21, 21, 7 and 8. Seven and eight. Twenty-one, seven and eight. The Bible said that he who overcomes shall inherit all things. Now be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorceress, that magicians, those who practice all kinds of magic, now powers, juju, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. At the final death. Seven and eight. He who overcomes shall inherit all things and will be, and I will be his God. He shall be my son. Now, to overcome means that there's a struggle going on. To overcome means to defeat your enemy, defeat your opponent, defeat the one who is resisting you. To overcome is to overcome the enemy. It means that there is a constant battle raging. He who overcomes. And God has given us every means by which we can overcome. That, that we are not using it. We are not prepared to, to take advantage of what God has make, made available to us in order to overcome. But he who overcomes. The word here is overcome. He who overcomes. He who endures to the end. Beloved, in this life, in this life, we are faced with many challenges, adversities, situations, afflictions that tend to, that with the intention of overcoming us, overcoming us. So we give up. 
Every one of us, every human being on earth is, face of, is facing some kind of opposition, affliction, temptation, challenges with the intention of overcoming that person so that that person will not overcome to the end, will not endure to the end. So that that person will end up in the lake of fire. That is how the world is. The world system is under Satan. The world and this system is governed, ruled by the prince of the air, Satan. But within the world, we also have the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. The kingdom, everyone that's in the kingdom, though you are in the world, you are not of the world. You are not part of the world. And therefore, you cannot be in the kingdom of God and also be in the world at the same time. The Bible says, he who makes himself a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Friendship with the world, friendship with the world system is enmity with God. The Bible is very, 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 Bible is very, very explicit. Very, very clear on this. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. It cannot be a friend of God and a friend of the world. No. You have to choose. So, Bible says, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. We all face one problem or the other. But remember that these things are designed by the world to cast you down. It can be sickness. It can be demonic attacks. It can be, be poverty. Anything. Anything. These are designed to make you just lose faith in God, deny God, and make you lawless so that you end up in the lake of fire. But he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, in fact, being a coward, you cannot be a Christian and be a coward. <laughs> but there are times when you have to be brave, you have to be courageous. And may we all be brave and courageous. They're cowardly. Cowardly, when they are faced situation, they just, they just give up. Or they, 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 they go to the other side. As long as things are okay, oh, we are with Jesus, we are Christians. But when they are faced with a, a choice, a choice, then they deny Jesus. They deny God out of cowardice. Because of fear. Because they are, they don't, they are not courageous. They are not brave. They are not able to face people in the world. It can be your father, your mother. It can be your relative, your uncle, your family head. Threatening you. Who are you? You are my son. If you don't do this, and then because of cowardice, because of fear, you just do what they want to do. Knowing very well that what they are asking you to do it's antichrist. It's an abomination. So, but they're cowardly, unbelieving. Unbelieving, those who don't believe in Jesus. Abominable, those who practice abominations. Murderers. And abortion is murder. Abortion is murder. Right now, in many parts of the world, people are in court, you know, supreme courts, uh, seeking the right to 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 commit abortion. If you read the papers, international papers, you, you don't see that much in Ghana, but when you look at international news, overseas news, um, people are in court, and they say the women, mainly the women, they say their bodies, they don't want the child. They don't want the child, so I have a right to get rid of it. I don't want this pregnancy, so I have the right to get rid of it. And in fact, in some places in, the, in Europe and America, you can even get rid of your child three months after birth. If you don't want the child, up to three months, you can get rid of the child. It's considered to be part of the abortion. So murder or abortion is murder. Sexually immoral. Sexually immoral. Sorceress. Those who practice magic, voodoo, whatever. Idolaters, worshippers of idols. Idolaters. And all liars. Liars shall have their part 
in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now imagine this. The Bible said that Satan is angel. There is no place in heaven anymore for them. You see, when heaven was created, God created a place for Satan, who was then Lucifer and his angels. But when they were cast out, the places were not left vacant. Their places were not left vacant. Places were removed. So now, there's no way they can go back. There's no place for them. There's no place for Satan and his angels in heaven anymore. Now, those who practice these things, they shall have their parts. There shall be a place reserved for them. They will have no, no place in heaven, but there's a place reserved for them in hell. And <laughs> talking about the book of life, there's always a book. There is always a spiritual book. There's a book. There are books. In fact, there are books. Books. We write in books. And in case you don't believe, there's, there's a book of life in heaven in which your name is and my name is where my name is. I know, I know that in some traditional settings all over the world, traditional settings in families, they have books. Every family has a book. As long as Satan is the ruler of this world, there's a book for every family in which there's a list of every member of the family. And I got to realize, I got to know that in this book, you don't see any writings. There are no writings, no font. No writing. When they open a book, it appears blank, blank pages. But there are names written in it. And once you position yourself in Christ Jesus, your name disappears from the book. When you come to Christ Jesus, automatically your name disappears from the book. I cannot say more than they have told you before. So that if you should go to your family house, go to the one and they open the book, if you are in Christ, they will not find your name in the book. They will mention names. But they say, oh, they can't find your name. As I stand here, I know that my name is not in the book in our family house. Because they've looked there, they didn't find my name. Not just me, but all those who are in Christ Jesus, your names are not in the book. My name cannot be in that book and also be in the book of life. It can only be in one place. Just as there cannot be a place for me in heaven and also a place for me in hell. No way. Therefore, as you watch me, as you hear me tonight, everyone who listen to me, may your name be written in the book of life. Put your hands up for Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 26. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. The last enemy. So death is an enemy. Death came through sin. Sin being our enemy make death our enemy. So the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 26. Now, before we conclude, the lake of fire conveys three very important lessons. There are some three important lessons we all need to learn from the lake of fire. Why Jesus talks so much about the lake of fire. Now, the sinners, the lawless, who shall be thrown into this lake are permanently, forever separated from God's love and from his good creation. There's, there shall no be transfer of people. You cannot cross. Once you are cast, that is it. Permanently separated from God's love and his good creation. They therefore, they therefore experience the second death we talk about. Second death. They die here on earth. That's the first death. Then they die again when they are cast into a lake of fire. And it's permanent. Permanent. And that's why I keep on saying that when the person dies, that is it. For it, upon, for it is appointed unto man to die once. 
For it is appointed unto man to die once after that judgment. So, when your, 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 your loved one dies, and we all shall die one day. Paul, Paul, Paul look forward to death. You welcomed it. And you've had a funeral service where the tributes are read and the uh, word of God is preached and everything in the church. And then there's a burial service in the, in the, in the cemetery. The, bo- the body is um, buried. What else? Then sometimes, oh, now you're going to have a funeral. What, what, what did a funeral achieve? What, what purpose is the funeral for? What is that funeral for? Where they sit down and they do all kinds of things that are ungodly. And you being as a Christian, and you there, you're enjoying it. It doesn't achieve anything. It doesn't serve any purpose. It has no significance, no benefit. So, now, this fire, this lake of fire points to God's holiness. God's holiness bringing punishment for evil deeds. See, if God was not holy, if the Lord that we said was not holy, if we are not holy, then there will be no difference. There is no need for hellfire or lake of fire. But because God is holy and God hates all abominations, believers are also holy, we have, we have a rational from God, therefore, we cannot be in the same place with those who are unholy, those who are abominable, those who belong to Satan. So this lake of fire points to God's holiness. His holiness therefore makes it necessary, makes it mandatory mm, to bring punishment for the evil deeds. God hates evil. God hates sin. God hates abomination. So you cannot let sin go unpunished. Hebrews 10, 30, and 31. Hebrews. God cannot just say, oh, nyari, nyari, to sin. He has to prove that he hates sin and hates evil. Hebrews 10, 31, 30, 31. Hebrews 10, verse 30 and 31. For we know him who said, for we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. That's verse 30. Verse 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Verse 30 says, For we know God who, who has said, or who said, Vengeance is mine. So you see, anytime you sin, you sin against God, you sin against God, a time comes when God will take vengeance. God will avenge. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Praise the Lord. Revelation 14, 9 to 12. Revelation 14, 9 to 12. Revelation chapter nine, sorry, chapter fourteen. Revelation fourteen, verses nine to twelve. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God." which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day and night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Amen. Finally, the third thing to remember about the lake of fire that is unquenchable. It's an unquenchable fire and describes hell as everlasting. Just as heaven 
It's everlasting. Hell is also everlasting. Hell will not come to an end. God knows, okay, now, after 10 years, it's enough. No. Hell is also eternal. It's also everlasting. And the fire there is unquenchable. And the worms there do not die. The fire is not quenched. And the worms do not die. So, Revelation 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10 again said, The devil who deceived them, who deceived them, hmm, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then, Mark chapter 9. Mark 9. Mark 9, 43 to 48. Mark chapter 9. Gospel according to Mark, according to Mark chapter 9, 43 to 48. Again, this is in conclusion. Mark chapter 9, 43 to 48. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. Where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Worms, worms and fire. And if your food causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life rather than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Verse 47. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's be on our feet. 